Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about matrix multiplication. In this case, after two introductory lectures about uh, multiplication of 2 by 2 square matrix and 3 by 3 square matrix, I would like to talk about general multiplication of matrices. Ma matrices. Um, well, sometimes people just give the definition of what is the, the product of two matrices and then they investigate the properties uh, like for instance associativity and some others. Um, I have chosen a, a different approach starting from matrices as um, representation of linear transformations and from um, approaching product of two matrices as a composition of linear transformations. So basically my most important goal was uh, to define something like this. So if I apply matrix A to a vector and then I will apply another linear transformation reflected by the matrix B by the result of the first one, then matrix transformation, ma matrix product is defined as a transformation matrix which does with the vector V exactly the same thing as the composition. I think this is a much more natural approach and from seeking this type of relationship um, I have defined the product at certain, uh, uh, using certain rule basically. Um, it seems to me it's more natural, but now, whatever the formula I have derived by basically trying to fulfill this particular requirement in some small cases like 2x2 two two and 3x3, three three, now I will just use the same formula as a definition, because now it seems to be much more natural to accept this as a definition of the product of two matrices rather than just start from this definition without any explanation, without any foundation, etc. So, now let me get back to the formula which I was basically talking about. So, if my matrix A is um, having um, uh, elements lowercase a now these are indices and uh, index k is from 1 to k and index m is from 1 to m. Now matrix B contains B lowercase elements with um, dimensions this one is the same from 1 to capital M and N is from N from 1 to capital N. So basically matrix A has dimension K by M, K, K, K rows and M columns and B has M rows and N columns. So I am defining my multiplication of two matrices which have one and only one requirement that the number of columns here is supposed to be to th the same as number of columns there. there, are, there then I can define the multiplication of A times B. I don't need this anymore. Plus it might be confusing because there I was multiplying B times A, which is not the same thing. All right, so I'm defining multiplication of matrix A by matrix B, where A I'm defining as a left component in the multiplication and B as the right component in the multiplication. Um, so again, the only requirement is that the number of columns uh, in A should be uh, number sorry number of uh, number of columns yes in A is supposed to be equal to number of rows in in B. Now why uh, is it supposed to be that way? 
Well, if you remember, for C elements i, j, I had the formula i's row from the matrix, from the left matrix, and I, I's row vector, I was, um, I was using this notation um, a i star. Star means all elements in the i's row. And it's actually a row vector. The length of this vector is equal to the number of columns, right? Multiplied by b star j, which is a j's column vector. So it's a j's column. So all the elements of the j's column are supposed to be um, basically elements of the vector of a vector b. And this is a scalar product of two vectors. Now, if I'm using a scalar product of two vectors, I can only do this if the dimension of both vectors is the same. Remember, if you have a vector a1, a2, a3, and the vector b1, b2, b3, then their scalar product would be c1, c2, c3, where c first is equal to where c i is equal to a i times b i, where i is one or two or three. So the number of elements must be the same, otherwise I would not be able to to form the scalar product. So this is the reason why the number of columns in the A matrix is supposed to be equal to the number of rows in the, uh, in the B, because the number of columns in A is exactly the dimension of the row vector, right? So if A is a matrix, then each row vector, which is this one, has dimension equal to the number of columns. Now, in case of a B, where I'm using the column vectors, the dimension of any column vector is number of rows. So that's why they're supposed to be the same, and that's why I'm using the same letter here and here. And after I've done that, I'm defining this matrix C in exactly the same way as I did it for two-dimensional case and three-dimensional case. And the only thing which I have to say is that I should uh, change from 1 to k and j should change from 1 to n. So, since the number of row vectors, which is number of different ai stars, is equal to the number of rows in the matrix A, so the first index i must, must be within this interval, number of rows in, in the A uh, matrix. And since the number of different B star j's, and uh, B star j is j's column, so the number of different um, columns is basically the number of columns in the B, which is n. So that's why I have it here. So that's why C has a dimension k times m. So you multiply k times m dimension, k, row, k rows, m, m columns, you multiply it by a matrix with m rows and n columns, and m is in the middle and it's equal, and k and n are on both sides, and these will be the dimensions of the result. So this is basically a definition. So the definition of the product is a new matrix which has dimensions k by n, and each element of this matrix is calculated according to this formula. So I'm just using exactly the same formula, exactly the same um, uh, ex expressions which I was using in two particular cases before, two by two matrices and, and three by three matrices. And I'm just generalizing it for everything. Okay, now, using this type of a definition, I can view certain things which I was doing before from the viewpoint 
presented in this multi matrix multiplication. I can view many different things as a particular cases of matrix multiplication. For instance, Now, my first example is a scalar. Now, scalar is just a number, right? Now, any number, let's say A, any number I can actually consider as a matrix with one and only one element. It's one by one matrix, one row, one column. Well, nothing prevents me from this, right? Now, according to my definition of the matrix multiplication, I can only multiply this by something which has dimension 1 times n, right? So my number of rows, which is uh, no, number of columns, which is 1, should be equal to number of rows, which is also 1. Now, but this is not really fixed, which means, what is this? Well, let's check it, t take a look at this. 1 times n means 1 row and n columns, right? So it's like 1, a1, a2, etc., a n. Now, what is it? Well, this is a vector. So any vector I can consider to be a matrix of the dimension of um, 1 row and, uh, and n columns, where n is a dimension of the vector. And what's interesting is, what if I multiply this matrix by this matrix. Well, according to the rules, the multiplication of, let me call this K. So this is K and this is A. All right, matrix A. So the multiplication of k times a, this is what? This is multiplication of matrix k by matrix a1, a2, etc., a n, right? Now, the result would be dimension 1 times 1, and this is 1 times n, so the result will be 1 times n. Let's call it B1, Bn. Now, according to the rules, Bij, where i is 1, only 1 actually, and j can change from 1 to n, should be equal to Ai star times, uh, sorry, k. First is k. k uh, i star times A star J. So, I's row vector and J's column vector, where I should be from 1 to 1, right? Because uh, that, that, that's the number of rows here, uh, a number of rows here, number of columns here, and J is from 1 to N, that's number of columns here. Now, uh, k i uh, star is supposed to be a, a vector. Now, what's the dimension? Number of columns in in the i's row of this matrix. Now, but this matrix is one by one, so there is only one dimension here. It's there, there is only one element in this scalar scalar product, and only one element in in this product, uh, because there are. Uh, uh, there's only one row here, right? So basically it's only nth element. This is equal to k times a j. That's what it is. And this is actually, since b i j and i is equal to 1 only, so this is actually b i on the left. So what is this? This is a multiplication of a vector, this vector, by a constant k. So what I, what, what, what my point is that multiplication of a vector by a vector by a constant is just a particular case of the multiplication of matrices. Right? Now, what else?
How about scalar product? Well, basically the same thing. Let's say you have vector A1, A, uh, well, let's use the letter M in this particular case. This is a vector. And this is another vector, B1, Bm. Now, what I will do, I will use this as a row vector, which is actually a matrix with one row and elements from A1 to An. Now this, I will write it differently. I will write it also as a matrix, but as a column matrix, a uh, column row. This is just another representation of the vector, right? Vector can be either 1 times M, this is M by the way, 1 times M matrix, which is this, or I can write it vertically. It doesn't really matter how I write a sequence of m, an ordered, an ordered set of m numbers. I can write it vertically as well. If I write it vertically, that would be m times 1. It would be m rows and one column, right? So if I multiply matrix uh, 1 by m times matrix m by 1, I will get matrix 1 by 1. Now, what is matrix 1 by 1? It's a scalar, right? So my scalar product actually can be expressed by multiplication of this matrix by this matrix. Why? In exactly the same rule. I have row, I have to scalarly multiply by, by a column, so A1 times B1, etc., etc., up to AM by BM. So the scalar product A by, A by B is exactly the same as uh, matrix product of A1, An times B1, Bm. M, M. I should use M, not N. Here. So the matrix multiplication of these two matrices, which both represent actually vectors of the same dimension M, is their scalar product. It's from the definition of the uh, of the matrix multiplication. So scalar product I also can view as a matrix product of two matrices. One is of this dimension, 1 times m, and another is this dimension of m, m times 1. So, not only multiplication of matrices which are really tables, certain number of rows and certain number of columns um, um, can be actually researched, but also uh, think things can be viewed from the matrix perspective, uh, which, which we viewed from different, uh, from different angles before. So vector is also a matrix. It just has only one row or one column. And even scalar is, or at least can be considered as a matrix, with one row and one column. So matrices are more general instrument in mathematics, and we can use rules applied to the matrices in general to all particular cases including scalars and vectors. Now, um, what else I wanted to talk about uh, matrices? All right, how about multiplication of matrices which are not really square? Now, you remember that I started from 2 by 2 matrix and uh, actually two 2 by 2 matrices and two three by three matrices and I was interpreting them as transformations, linear transformations and then I basically defined their product. Now the, uh, the general definition which I gave before didn't really contain this particular requirement that the matrices should be square. Any matrices can be multiplied as long as the left matrix has the same number of columns as the right matrix has the number of rows. Now, let me give you an example when a linear transformation actually uh, involves not the square matrix, but just a matrix with different number of rows and, and, and columns. Now, for this, I would like you to take a look at the linear transformation itself. Now, what is a classical linear transformation I was using, let's say, in um, in, in two-dimensional case. V1 was equal to A11U1 plus A12U2 
and V2 was equal to A1 to A U1 plus A22 U2. Now, how can that be viewed? Well, it can be viewed very easily. Now, matrix of two rows and one column, which is actually a column vector V, is equal to a matrix multiplication by the matrix of uh, its coefficients, the matrix of transformation, as we see, by a vector uh, u1, u2. which is a column vector and matrix again. Now, this has a dimension 2 times 1, right? 2 rows, 1 column. This is 2 by 2, and this is also 2 by 1. So if I multiply 2 by 2 by 2 by 1, the middle ones are the same, number of columns here and number of rows there, and the outside are the resulting dimension, 2 by 1, 2 by 1. So everything is fine. Now. Let's um, uh, find out how this is supposed to be multiplied. Well, again, my formula is is equal to a i star times u uh, star j, right? That's my general formula. So. Um, let me just write down as, as two individual formulas, basically, because I have only two elements in the matrix, V, I, J, because I is changing from 1 to 2, and J is equal to 1 and only 1. So I have, I have V1, and I don't even want to write the second index because it's always 1 anyway, and V2. Now, what is this? Now, this is I is equal to 1, so this is I1 star times U star 1. And this is A2 star times U star 1. Right? The second coefficient is 1, here and here. So that's why it's 1 here and I didn't really have to write it down. Now, what is this? Well, this is, on the right, this is the first column with different rows. Different rows are 1 and 2, right? Now, this is the first row, A11 and A12. So we multiply the first row by the first column, which is equal to 1, A11, U1, first by times first, plus A12, U2. In this case, we are multiplying the second row by the first column and only. So the second row is this, the first and only is this, and scalar multiplication are first times first and second times second. So we have our equations, right? So this is a matrix representation of this particular system of two equations or transformation. So linear transformation from U to V is actually a multiplication by a matrix. But now I was talking about multiplication by matrices, matrices which are not really square. In this case, it's a square. With two-dimensional U, we transform into two-dimensional V. Well, can there be any transformations which are not square? Uh, well, yes, but let's just make a very interesting example. Um, and again, example is very real, and that's why I think I like it. I mean, I can obviously have some uh, very abstract example, something like uh, I will take the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is 2 times 3, and multiplied by matrix uh, uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, which is 3 by 2, so 2 by 3 times 3 by 2. The middle ones are the same, 
and the outer ones would be a dimension of new matrix. So it would be something like A, B, C, D, and I, cal I can calculate A, B, and C, and D just using the formula. Like A, for instance, uh, which is uh, an, an element of first row and first column. So it's first row and first column. 1 times 7, which is 7, plus 2 times 9 is 18, so it's 25, plus 33, 50, whatever, 8. So A is equal to 58. I mean, I can do these man manipulations, but that's not interesting because they don't really have any more substantial things behind them. But I'm going to do, just as an example of the linear transformation, which is uh, reflected in, in a non-square matrix, is the following. Let's have the matrix this. And uh, I will multiply it by, now this is what, 2 by 3, right? 2 rows, 3 columns. I will multiply it by this vector. What will I have? Well, in theory, from uh, now these uh, um, number of columns here is equal to number of rows, but number of rows here and number of columns there would be a dimension of the vector which I will receive. So I will receive a two-dimensional vector. Right? Let's put it A, B. Two-dimensional column vector, by the way. It's two rows and one column. Now, what is A? Well, A is an element 1, 1, which means first row times first column, which is 1 times x, which is x, 0 and 0, nothing more. Now, what's the B? B is second row, first column. So it's second row, first column, which is 0 times x plus 1 times y, which is y, and 0. So here I have x and y. So multiplying vector x, y, z times this matrix, vector, vector considered as a matrix, actually. So the column vector, uh, I, I multiply on the left with this particular matrix, and I'm getting this. Now, what is this transformation of x, y, z into x, y? Well, let's just think about it. If you have a three-dimensional space, and here is your vector, which has coordinates x, y, and z. Now, you drop down the perpendicular onto the x, y plane, right? So if this is P, this is Q. Q is a projection of the point P. And it has projections here uh, I prefer Z to have on the top in this case so this is Y this piece and this piece is X and the vertical thing is Z right so from X Y Z I get only X Y so this particular uh, transformation transforms this vector into its projection on the XYZ, uh, on the XY plane. So, my point is that if transformation matrix is non-square, then we are changing the dimension, actually. We are changing from three-dimensional vector to two-dimensional vector on the plane, which is a projection. So, this is a projection. If you remember, I gave you some examples when you can have a matrix which like stretching, for instance, uh, by the factor of k. That would be a square matrix with k on the diagonal. Or something like a reflection, then some of the coefficients were, uh, were equal to minus 1 or whatever. Well, this is just an example of a non-square matrix, which not only does something, but also it just projects uh, the three-dimensional vector onto two-dimensional uh, space. 
That's what's very important. Okay, and, and, and the, last thing, the last thing which I wanted to mention is the following. Now, you remember that I was start, I, I started explana explanation about matrix multiplication by requiring that this be equal to this. So the transformation by matrix A, and then consecutively uh, uh, transformation of matrix B would be the same as if I will multiply B times A and then apply this as a matrix of transformation to it. That's how I started. Now, what is this? This is basically associative law because forget about application of matrix of transformation to the vector. This is, as I was just showing before, a real multiplication. And this is also a real multiplication. And this is also a multiplication. So whenever I'm saying that, okay, we have a transformation reflected by a matrix, and this transformation is applied to the, the, the uh, column vector. So, I can replace right now all these words, like transformation, which is reflected by a matrix, and the transformation is applied to the vector, and the, uh, and, and the equations I was writing, where matrix are, are the coefficients, actually, is the reflection of this transformation. I can basically replace all this with saying, okay, we are multiplying matrix A by a column vector X or then matrix B we apply by a product of matrix A and column vector uh, X. Or in this case, we are multiplying B and A, and the result we are multiplying by X. Now, what is this? This is an associative law. The only thing in, in that particular case, associative law was applied uh, only when two matrices were square, and this matrix is actually a, a column vector. So, in the two and three dimensional cases, which I was basically starting my multiplication uh, agenda, um, I was using this particular case of associativity when this is a column vector and these two are square matrices, two by two or three by three. But in general, the, the, the definition which I was just making before, the definition of the product of any two matrices, uh, is associative. And this is one of the properties which I am going to discuss in the next lecture. So that's how I'm preparing for the next lecture, actually. So that's it for today. Um, I do recommend you to go to unizor.com and the comments for this particular lecture contain basically the, the material which, which I am explaining. And uh, don't forget that if you um, register, you can take exams. Uh, and uh, you will need a supervisor who will enroll you into certain topics uh, or you can yourself be a supervisor just uh, sign in with a different name and different role as a, as, as a parent or a supervisor. Alright, so that's it for today. Good luck. Thank you very much.